Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. I am Joseph F. Ulsis, Addiction Master on most social media. Today I'm going to be talking about a Netflix original animated series, Masters of the Universe, Revelation. I was a big fan of He-Man back in the day. Uh, I think it's the uh, early 80s, about 83. I had the action figures, some of the setups, but it wasn't my... I was never obsessed with it in a fashion. I even liked she and somewhat, can you know, stayed connected to the franchise in a way. I've seen some of the... There was a reboot that came out. But this is a Netflix series developed by Kevin Smith. And it has some pretty good voice acting. Actually, I would say very good. Uh, borderline on great. I don't know who Chris Wood is, but he plays Adam. Prince Adam and He-Man. You got Mark Hamill. Liam Cunningham, which is Sir Davos, I believe his name is. Sarah Michelle Gellar. Lena Headey. This is done very well. I will give a little bit of a synopsis and just a tiny bit but no spoilers or major plot reveals the show really wants to keep the feel and the look of the original which is really good i think that's a a plus on the whole i would say i enjoyed it it didn't wow me but it's five episodes it feels um, a little disjointed in that sense, but the premise is He-Man is already a known factor. It's more like a continuation from the old cartoon. I think it even says that they tried to pick up on story elements that it actually left off in, in 1985. So, he is not an origin show. And He-Man is given uh, like a, a little voice at, narration about the state of the world, Eternia, the, that type of thing. And then he, He-Man is the most powerful man in the universe. And it goes into an adventure. Now, the ramifications of this adventure shift the show to focus on Tila, who is voiced by Sarah Michelle Gellar, and I think she's awesome in it. And it really fits. I don't have a problem with this. This is not the nitpicks or the gripes I have with the show. But, like I said, I did enjoy it. So, because of the battle with He-Man, Skeletor, Mark Hamill is awesome in it. There's a quest that has to be taken by Tila. And there's a really good, done very well, mixture of... You know, evil and good have to work together to figure out how to save Eternia. And I think on that basis alone, I think it's a good series. It's not titled He-Man, Masters of the Universe. But even before I um, got to talk to many of my friends, someone had already said about the griping that people are doing. Now, first off... I'm not a big Kevin Smith director fan. I think his best movie is Red State. I recommend that. I did a podcast on it. But I'm not into most of his other movies. I like him as a personality, maybe as a person in that sense. But I've watched his specials, that type of thing. And, you know, I can't say I'm a big fan of his, uh, you know, the movies he makes. But love him as a person, as a, you know... Uh, content creator, although I don't really look for him for reviews in that sense, but it's a little thing of a tasting. Sometimes I look for something different in, you know, not trying to make me biased. In any case, I think he does well here. I think the show is geared for highlighting Tila, and I'm fine with it, like I said. I think there's a little bit of problems here and there, but it starts off really well, and the music really captivated me in the beginning, but I did notice at some points I felt it lacking, 
So it really wowed me in the beginning, and then kind of, you know, was like, it actually caught my attention of, you know, you make these things up in your head, but maybe the first episode was, uh, you know, paid special attention to, and they wanted that opening to catch people, and it worked. And maybe it just needs to be, I don't know, maybe highlighted better throughout the series. And like I said, you only got five episodes, so it feels different. It, um... It doesn't try to be super adult, but it does have some, you know, adult themes in that in that in that way that is going to places that represent, you know, either heaven or hell. And it's a a really good look at what you could do now with an animation. You wanna keep the style of the original, you wanna honor the you know the um the toys themselves which are a major part of growing up there's that balance i don't think that balance is there anymore today like how valuable the toys were to sell the animation or the tv show like transformers for instance i was going to the store all the time to see what new transformers came out like i said i wasn't as focused on he-man masters of the universe as i was transformers so i'll, I'll give that but I really enjoyed the action figures, and it really pays homage to all that. And some of the voice acting is top-notch, sometimes captivating, and really comes through in a way that's special. So, I would give it a positive review, but, you know, I mean, I am. There's just something off about it that didn't sit right with me in certain aspects, and I think it has to do with the... They try to give the the first arc a, how do you explain it, like a race against time. And I think that's where it fails. But in the growth of the characters, I liked. Uh, the interactions were spectacular. There was a freshness to the series that I felt in, it was invigorating. Because like I said, I not wasn't the biggest fan, but I did like it. I enjoyed it. I watched it all the time. I had the figures from here and there, but I wasn't the big collector who had all the castles and every variant and you know the guy's heads who had different attachments i had the six million dollar man the bionic man doll okay and it was like one of my favorite toys in any case kevin smith does a good job here and this is could be one of those hey look it's just not totally for me but i am excited about part two i just don't think this is a masterpiece in that sense but it's something I would recommend. There's some stellar performances, and when you look at the overall arc, it cuts short by five episodes, and I think that's where it jaws me a little bit. And I don't know if that's, you know, I sometimes think, you know, I get spoiled with series dropping all at once. And I do understand the logic of you want advertisements and you want it to go week to week, even if you had you know, 12 episodes already done, edited, perfected. You might want to keep it going week to week and keep the engagement, um, that conversation going. I get that. But in this day and age, having the up the opportunity and the um, convenience of watching it at my own pace is so important these days. For me, personally, and I think for a lot of people. And granted, yes, there are five episodes put out, but... You know, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of uh, shifting pieces, and I think that's where the tension of this race against time kind of falls flat. It kind of has a, um, you know, just the the stakes aren't as great as what you think they might be when it's presented. It just gives me that feeling, and it could be turned around easily. This is not. This is just me finding nitpicks out of it because I generally enjoyed it. Um, and like I said, I am excited for it. I really think that it shines in its voice acting, its performances, the chemistry. And according to one of the, when you watch it, there's a, another episode after it ends. And it's more like Kevin Smith coming out with um, a couple of the actors that do interviews, that type of thing. He talks about it. There's a... Uh, 
some little tidbits you find in there that I thought were fascinating, and now I'm thinking about it. I'm not sure if I want to give too much away with these things, but um, there was a time when they got together in the beginning before the coronavirus, the pandemic, and then most of this was done apart, which I thought was fascinating and really good. Like you, I think he's the right guy to get a project like this together, and it's just not the wow I was looking for. Um, maybe I think I had more of a wow factor with Transformers, War for Cybertron, but it's more of a uh, love, beloved franchise and you know, toy line for me. So I think this is borderline very good. I think fans will like it, but the big thing I'm seeing, like I said before, is that it's not about He-Man and it's about Tila. I think they do it very well. I don't think real fans will be annoyed. And they try to do a couple of things during the shows. Well, maybe maybe not enough with a... Uh, so Tila will come to a location and she'll have a vision or a flashback of an adventure with He-Man. Maybe if they did that more often, like that formula worked better, people wouldn't be complaining, but I think it's really, you know, nitpicking, and you tell a good story, if it's good for me, it's good, and I think this is good. Borderline, very good. We'll see how it ends. I think this is one of those things where you're not looking to judge it. Because this first five, se- five episodes are so, it's short, and it kind of has one arc, and you're like, what? And then, okay, so it feels like it drops off a cliff, and that's what a you know cliffhanger is. But when you look at the way it was put together, those are where my nitpicks lead up to, like the editing or the pacing could have maybe done been a little better. And that's really it about nitpicking. I really... Again, appreciate how they kept the animation really similar and close. I've seen some horrible takes on franchises and beloved childhood things. And it just annoys me for the most part. I do understand the pokerification, whatever, of um, characters when they want to do young series. So it's just not for me, but fine. I mean, it doesn't annoy me. But when it's something I really want to get into... I don't like them changing that much, but bringing it up to date, I think this does a good job of that. And, again, I'll watch it again, thinking about the sound, but I think it really wowed me in the beginning, and then there was a part where I was like, you know, this should be here, like this, that, like they wanted to put me in the mode that they put me in in the beginning, but didn't use the same type of music or the same uh, effort in it, and it kind of, I fell short, but then again, is it the same? Does it correlate with it dropping? It's five episodes. This is a little weird. But I'm going to give it really high marks for the first five episodes. Kevin Smith did a good job. I'm just a little, you know, he's just watched it. It didn't really absorb it much, other than take a couple of notes here and there. But I'm going to give it a, 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 a good rating. I think it succeeds where it needs to. And this idea of He-Man not being the focal point. All right, fine. It's not He-Man. It's okay. But I really enjoyed what they did. I love Sarah Michelle Gellar as an actress or a voice actress. I think it works really well for the character. And a continuation, a revelation about former... um, I don't know, would you call him He-Man or former... Masters of the Universe. So they do a thing where you get to meet some of the former heroes who are chosen. I guess that's the best way to describe it without giving too much away. Where Prince Adam, He-Man, is not the first and only savior or hero. Maybe He might be the one that's called He-Man, like I'm not sure. Because I'm thinking about it. Because one of the guys they describe is the honorary 
named Grayskull after him, so it was like uh, Lord Grayskull or something like that, one of the first hero who wielded a sword of power. But I don't think they're give them, given the moniker He-Man, which I actually am curious about now. <laughs> that, uh, that would actually be weird. So summing it up again, really liked it. Borderline on very good. Didn't super wow me. But it's five episodes, it's a little jarring, and when you got this arc going, I, uh, it could really pull together and make the first five episodes get a higher rank or, you know, uh, watching, if you watched Disney's um, WandaVision, the first three episodes of that show, if you just stopped watching that, you might have a weird perspective on the show. And rank them differently if you were watching them one by one. But when you get to the fourth, fifth, sixth, and as it ends, the beginning makes more sense and it makes it a stronger story as a whole. I think this has that potential. So coming away from this, I guess that would be my, you know, surface thoughts of this. Very good. Can make it better. The last, the second chapter, I guess, or I think it's going to be in two parts. So maybe another five episodes. We'll see. These next five episodes can improve the first five without a doubt, in my opinion. It could even raise it even more. And maybe that's a, a gamble you take, right? With a company like this and you got this promotion, you know, there are delays. You got to give it credit. Like I said, these actors got together once before the pandemic. And they were able to get together. I don't know if they got together more. Maybe at the end. But it's mostly done isolated. Uh. Sarah Michelle Gallat tells a story about having to, her husband, uh, redo her room when she could have it uh, soundproof and sound better. So, looking at it from that point of view, kudos. Uh, this is a uh, an achievement, I guess. But, you know, not knowing all the particulars. I'm not the most in-depth reporter. Critique. <laughs> In any case, I hope everybody's doing well. I think people will enjoy it. Kids, maybe, are going to be asking where's he, man, if they know about it, but maybe they won't because it's 1983, 85, so who's looking at this right now? Not an origin piece, but done very well. Till next time, everybody, be well and take care, everybody.